Support for the Nature Museum is provided by Rose Pest Solutions, protecting homes, businesses, health, and the environment since 1860. Hi everyone, and welcome back to Curious by Nature. My name is Erin, and this week is Reptile Awareness Week, so we're going to learn a little bit more about reptiles and amphibians with our living collections. Let's get started. So I'm joined by Biggie the corn snake, and Biggie is a reptile. A reptile is a group of animals. They are gonna be cold-blooded animals, and they're going to have drier skin than for other cold-blooded animals. This is important, they're gonna have bones. So Biggie has lots and lots of bones within his very long body. He's got a very long spine and rib bones all the way from the top of his head to the tip of his tail. And Biggie is covered in scales. And scales are made out of the same things that your fingernails are made out of keratin. It's a building block of scales. So if you take a peek at your own fingernails, you will see they almost look like snake scales. The reason reptiles are covered in kind of a drier, scalier skin than other cold-blooded animals is that that allows them to live almost anywhere. So you could find a reptile in lots of different habitats. You could find them in marshes, mountains, prairies, forests. With the dry, scaly, protective skin, they don't have to worry about much. They're completely protected all over their body. So let's take a deeper look at Biggie's scales. As we take a peek at them, you'll notice that there are different shapes happening across his body. So the scales on the very top of his body, they're gonna be kind of shaped like almonds. So they're very round. Well, the scales on his belly are very long and very flat. So having very long and wider scales on his belly, allows Biggie, if he were in the wild, to have some tread on his belly. He would slither around on lots of different habitats. So there might be pine needles, leaves, sand, gravel. And having almost like tread, like the bottom of your boots in the snow, means he's not gonna slip or slide over anything while he might be pursuing prey or finding a safe space to go. Their eggs are gonna be something that give them away as, as a reptile. So reptile eggs are gonna have a leathery case to them and have everything that that young needs to survive inside. And when a young snake hatches out of an egg, it's gonna look almost exactly like its parents. It's gonna be just a smaller version of that animal. And while I mentioned that Biggie is a cold-blooded animal, he's an ectotherm, that means that he gets his energy by the temperature around him. So in his enclosure at the Nature Museum, he has a heat lamp because a warm spot for a snake is gonna give them energy. So once again, the features of a reptile are going to be dry, scaly skin that allows them to live just about anywhere. They're going to have eggs that have a leathery case to them and they are ectotherms. They are cold-blooded animals. So I'm gonna put Biggie back in the lab, but we're gonna be joined by another Living Collections friend that will tell us a little bit more about what amphibians are and maybe some differences between amphibians and reptiles and how those differences might just be skin deep. Now we're joined here by Dart, the tiger salamander, and he is an amphibian. And with Dart, we're gonna take a peek at him. His skin is very, very different from Biggie's skin. When we look at him, I always take out some RO water from the Lookin Lab at the Nature Museum. That stands for reverse osmosis water. It's a process in which all the impurities of tap water are taken out. So when we handle dart, we handle him with just the cleanest water because his skin is so, so porous. That means it can soak up a lot of different things. So when we're looking at dart and exploring his skin, I want us to look at his entire body. Because a lot of people, when they see a tiger salamander, they're out and about in Illinois. They are actually the state amphibian. They look a lot like a lizard does. They have a head, four arms, one really long tail. And with those features, people tend to think reptile and lizard. But with the salamander, what's gonna give them away right away is their skin will not be scaly, like Biggie's skin. And when you look at those four limbs at the very ends of each of his fingers, there's not gonna be any claws. A lot of lizards are gonna have keratin at the very end of their fingertips. But the salamander, without any scales, without any keratin, there aren't going to be any claws. And instead, you're just gonna see very stubby, um, tinier fingers that are really good for sticking onto things. So reptile eggs have that leathery case again. 
So salamander eggs are gonna be more like jelly and they're laid in the water. They need to have a source of moisture always. And then when salamander eggs hatch, Instead of looking like just smaller versions of salamanders, they're gonna look a lot more like tadpoles. And the one thing that is similar when it comes to reptiles and amphibians is that they're both cold-blooded. So a start here is an ectothermia, is a cold-blooded animal. So let's think about what we saw. We saw Biggie the corn snake with scales with dry skin, and we saw Dart the tiger salamander with moister skin. So when it comes to making differences between reptiles and amphibians, really just skin deep. That's our show for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed meeting Biggie and Dart and be sure to leave any questions on reptiles or amphibians in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. We'll see you here next time on Curious by Nature.